time for Neanderthal. Podcast is always in my head. Listen to Neanderthal. In three, two, one. My name's Ryan. This is Neanderthal Podcast, and you are? Uh, my name's Donald Sledge. I'm a head coach of esports at Central Methodist University. That's a thing. Yeah. You're a head coach. Yeah. Get right up on that mic. Yeah, it's it's a it's a definite thing. You head, know. head coach of esports at Central Methodist University. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is uh, when I think of that, like, I think of that as like a Christian based school. Is that correct or no? Yes, it, yes, it is. Okay, so it's definitely a Christian based school. They hold up a lot of the values of you know Christianity. They have church. We Nothing have wrong a, with that. you know we have church chapel every Thursday. Oh, cool. Yeah, you got uh, surprised of all the schools that would embrace esports. It'd be a religious t- or a, a Christian-based school. Yeah, we I don't know why. Maybe that's just me being judgmental, and I don't mean to be. But oh no, it's it's fine. It's definitely something that was that was new when we when uh, I talked to the uh, president of our institution. He was just like, "Hey, would you like to be a part of that?" And I was like, "Sure." Yeah. How does this whole start? How did it start with your school? So I remember the the day. I went to see him. I was trying to figure out how to get more like game design stuff because that's what I was. I'm a computer science major. I okay. graduated from there. And okay. So it was my senior, second half of my senior year. I'm like, hey, I want to see if we can get Unreal Engine, things like that in right. for game design. Nice. So I went in there to talk to him. I'm like, hey, these are things on my mind. He's like, hey, do you want to uh, coach the esports team? Do you want to be a part of the esports team? I'm like, sure. What, did he get like some kind of email about something? Like, how did he I know about it? I have no idea. It was just out of nowhere. How like, old is this guy? Uh, I don't know. It's just pretty. He's up there. He's, he's, up, he's wow. up there, and he was just he brought he brought it to me, and I was like, "This is this is de- I'll definitely do that." Right, I'll right definitely. Alley. Do so right after graduation, that was kind of some of the things that started to manifest. Wow, that's really that's interesting, dude. It was it was it was <clears throat> pretty interesting. I've never heard of an esports coach before. Um, I mean, I've heard of it before, but not as like a. A call like you're a head coach of a football team, but instead of football, right? It's esports. It's e-sports. You usually don't hear it on that level, I think, because it's still growing. Yeah, it's the still collegiate still collegiate scene <coughs> is just like just now starting to boom and pick up. The Midwest is a big area for it. We have like there's just like it's sprouting around us. Mizzou's gonna have one. Uh, Columbia College, uh, Marsh, uh, Missouri Valley University, they have one. It's it's just like it's starting to sprout and take root, which is a wonderful thing for mm-hmm. you know the opportunities for students and. That's insane. Are you, you offer chance. scholarships? Yes, we do. We do. You know why? How old are you? How old are you? Games. I am thirty. Okay. Yeah. Man, I'm thirty nine. <laughs> if th- if I knew growing up that that was a thing, I would have spent a lot less time on the soccer field. I I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> We all, uh, it came like as a shock when we were like, okay, we're giving away scholarships. Yeah, that's insane. And one of the things I always thought about, and I, which makes me love the opportunity, is that we're giving scholarships. I come from a group of friends when, back when I was in my younger years, we would game all the time. That's what we would do. That's what took me so long to graduate college. But what was <laughs> we your would, game? We, uh, we played Tekken, Street Fighter. Fight we played games. a lot of fighting games. Okay. On what system? Dreamcast? Or? We used to play, we played Dreamcast, mm. PS2, 3, you know, every every reiteration of Tekken. Right, right. Street Fighter, Soul Calibur sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the big thing, though, is the change. And, like, now getting that scholarship when coming from a background, my friends would go to Evo. They travel. You right. Know? And that's. Two to three thousand dollars. You're spending all of this money. I'm not. You know, on a risk. You know, but that's what they were. That's <laughs> right. what they were doing. If you're passionate about it, that's yeah. what you're doing. You're going out the way. You're like, okay, I'm gonna go to Evo, and then you're gonna hope you win. And it's like, oh, if you don't, you're out of that money. So the right. gamble and the risk of it is so much was so much higher. Yeah. Back then, and like now, esports is at this this great place yeah. where hey, you got this scholarship. You guys do good this entire season. In Overwatch or League or Rocket League, you get to go to the semifinals, which wherever that is, and it's paid for and it's that taken care of. That is absolutely crazy. So it's like, damn, a, 
it's a wonderful opportunity than you know what it used to be when you had to be this gamer on your own getting yelled at by mom right go to work get a job right finish school yeah that's why are you wasting your time doing video games that ain't gonna pay nothing when you get older right and now it is that's awesome that's so good to know i got a five-year-old and he plays a little Fortnite with me from time to time that's that's good just keep him on it you that's know. what i'm saying <clears throat> what uh how many school is it a pretty competitive like a uh, group of schools you're competing i see another couple other colleges next to you with the booths uh like i guess recruiting or whatever do you have a are there a lot of colleges that are offering esports not as of yet and the thing about that is we kind of are encouraging students to go to every college with esports so we can build it up so it can get bigger um and the the conference we play in which is the true beauty of esports we play like all conferences we play we play d1 d2 yeah we play any school that has an esports team you know so we've played boise state and they have a wonderful rocket league team you know with do you guys have a football team yeah we do so if your football team were to go play boise state what would happen Oh, they wouldn't be able to. You know, we're in a special, a certain division where they can't do that. No, no, I, I understand that. I'm just saying, let's take all rules and everything. Let's say Boise State played your guys as a football team. Oh, they wouldn't do good. They would murder them, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm not trying to talk trash on your oh, on no, your on your. Now I'm saying now if your esports team plays Boise State, is it the same kind of thing, or can you guys hang with anybody? Oh, they hang. They hang. Yeah, our team. In the beginning, I'll be honest and put it out there. Like, at the beginning, Boise State was rough, you know. Yeah. But it's our first year, so, you know, give, yeah. them, give them that. But as the year progressed, they began to be able to hang with their B team, and they yeah. were starting to improve. Okay. So that's that's the true beauty of it. You right. know, we had this great relationship with the team, so we could, like, build. We're just like, hey, you guys want to do scrims? And, you know, the scrims were rough in the beginning. They're yeah. Like, Ugh. You're like, do they really want to lose <laughs> So, you know, it starts off like that, but as the relationships, like, build and the bond show, you know, they played, they got better, they improved. You know, they yeah. were inspired by playing Boise State. They saw what they that. did. Yeah. When you're seeing people make aerial shots, like in Rocket League, one hitting the ceiling of the top of the area and then bouncing right into the goal. Right. Or just some of the ways they would connect it because they played really, really well. You were just like, wow, I like that. And, you know, Rocket League is that type of game where yeah. it inspires a competitive spirit, but it also wow. inspires, like, friendship and wanting to improve and wanting to get better and right. doing what it takes. What else? So there's certain games. Like, what games do you guys play? We play Rocket League, Overwatch, Hearthstone. We're planning on adding Fortnite 2019. you got to do Fortnite. We're, we, it's just too it big. you got to. It's the game. It is. It's in the way. We have to. You have to. Yeah. No way around it. Yeah. And we we also have Madden as well. Oh yeah, you Madden. gotta do Madden's been huge forever. Yeah, we have we have Madden. Love me some Madden. I w- actually I was more of an NCAA football. Oh yeah, everybody everybody <clears throat> talks about that game. They're like NCAA needs to come back at some point. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, that, that was a, my game. That is so cool. So do you guys have? I pl- I played uh, I, I just I played soccer at a JUCO. I had a scholarship there. Who can't do that, right? Right. Um, but we would have practices, like two a days. Do you guys do practices? Like, yes, we. What's practice. that like? like? Oh my God, what is practice like? Yeah. With esports, how many people are on on your team to begin so with? So we have twenty. Okay. Twenty practice is some days it's all day, some days it's not. Uh, with me, like some of us juggle positions who are a part of it, so they have to do two positions two positions because it's so new yeah but most times it's sometimes it's all evening so the earliest practice is usually after three because you uh, guys are allowed to practice as much as you want are there any rules restricting when you can and how much you can and can't practice really as far as the only restriction is as long as the coaches are there and they are in the facility okay you guys have a facility yes we have here i am thinking you guys are like in dorm room yeah what's the facility like man it's beautiful. It is when they put it together. So recruiting up until that facility was built was rough. But right. once that facility was built and the students come and their eyes are just like they glow. And then once we turn the light out, because lights out, we have like lights that just show up and illuminate the darkness. They like fall in love and they're entranced with the room. So what's it like? Like you got the gaming chairs and a bunch of flat screen TVs or like? It's the gaming chairs. Uh, right now, gaming chairs, the monitors. 
the PCs, everything. Is it a big open space and you guys are all? It's pretty open. It's really like you open. Like when you guys are playing, like, is there that camaraderie where you guys are kind of all next to each other or are you guys separated by like uh, partitions or anything? So or? there's one partition Couches? in the middle. There is a couch. <laughs> we recently got the couch, but there is a got couch. Got to, right? And we're going to get that there for commentating. So that's one of the things we're trying to build up right at, like right now, trying to get that station set up. But it has a partition in the middle, and the PCs are surrounded around it. Okay. So you can tell, like, which side is Overwatch, because Overwatch has so many, like, items Overwatch-related. So many of the characters, the pop-ups are just right there okay. above the stations. And we're getting Rocket League to put some stuff on their side. They're going to have some nice things that signify Rocket League. So. So are there different teams? So there's like a Rocket League team and then there's the Overwatch team. Are there like you guys have separate little teams for each game or does every or is it like a, we have these players and they can play all the games and they're good at all the games? Or like, how does that work? So there are separate players for certain titles and we do encourage like if a student wants to say play Hearthstone and Overwatch, one of them does do both. He plays Overwatch, plays Hearthstone, also plays League. So it depends on your workload and what you believe you can do. Yeah. You know, we don't restrict them. To, you can play as many games as you want. Yeah. So it's just making sure that it's something you're good at. Yeah. And as we're, like, starting to expand for the next upcoming year, we're going to split up the team. So if your top priority is Overwatch, per se, then your second priority team, you're going to be on the B team on the other team. Okay. You know, to make yeah. sure you balance out what you're doing and so you don't Man. feel the pressure of having to – play so hard at Overwatch, so much league. Yeah. You know, you're just burnt out on both. So, you know, we just want to make sure it's an open avenue and opportunity for you to do what you want to. What's your role as the coach? Are you, like, te teaching drills? Like, do you teach them how to be better at the game? Or, like, what is like what is so, an e-coach? What are some of your roles? So some of the roles, um, they, which they vary, some days – are recruiting some days are heavily recruiting that's like the thing is trying to make sure that's what you're here doing recruiting a little bit a little bit we're doing a little bit of recruiting okay but most of what we do so sometimes we're recruiting and sometimes we're making sure we spend enough time with the players but it's always on a like a daily thing day to day because they practice every day of the week so yeah some days it'll be you know, coach is back there trying to get some of the students together, but he'll be out for the later practices, so I'll come out for the later practices to yeah. be with the students. And, like, sometimes mm. when the assistant coach is there and he's out there, sometimes I'll stay back so I can do some recruiting. Okay. But we usually try to alternate. We make sure we balance the time between recruiting and keeping them there, making sure they're happy and taking care of the students. Sometimes, How many coaches do you have? Uh, we just got two right now. Yeah? Two. Is that, does that stretch your guys pretty thin? It some I believe I'll have to say some days are rough. Yeah. For the most part, though, it's like it's all about the passion, you know. Right. And like the passion is what will keep you there to 10 p.m., you know, after working the full work day. Right. So the passion is a big plays a big part in, you know, the practices and being there and being supportive. Yeah. I got so many questions. But, you know, like in football, the coach is drawing up different plays to beat a certain team. Are you doing something like that? All right, we're playing Boise State. Here's how we're going to beat them. Here's how we need to attack them in Overwatch. We need to be super aggressive or not sort like, do you do anything like that? Is that a thing? That That is a thing, but sometimes some of those things are reserved for team captain. We're actually going to pick the team captain for Overwatch when we get back. Nice. Because, like, she plays really well. She does a good job. Uh, and, you know, she's a, a wonderful resource. So, you know, that's usually who handles, like, a lot of the mantle as far as in for Overwatch because it's a game where, you know, the team has to play together, you know. Okay, the, I don't know anything about Overwatch, really. Overwatch is a shooter, so it's yeah. an FPS, with, and the, each one of the players have different abilities yeah. that benefit them in different situations. Okay. So there's a character called Doomfist, and he has – He's a different type of character. He has like a projectile or he has a projectile type attack. So there's one where he'll rush at you with his fist. There's <laughs> one where he'll hit you with the uppercut. Okay. And there's one where he'll leap at you. So it's learning how to use all those different attacks. Okay. Deal with their cooldowns. And cool each character's downs. got their own certain attack yes. and yes, they have a old, thing. They actually have an old man character. They call him Soldier. <laughs> and what he does, he just has a gun. You know, it's pretty basic. Right. His button... Make some run, 
and the other button shoots like a rocket, and the other okay. one shoots and is a special. Nice. Every one of them has a, like an ultimate or a special. Right, right. Makes you allows you to be able to shoot the gun and shoot any target, even if you're not over it. And that's just that's one of the main games, huh? And called the Collegiate. Yes. yes, that is. It's that one. It seems like it'd be a good one. It's a it's a lot of fun. It's it's pretty comical and it's pretty fun. Is it like four v four or? It's a six v six. Sometimes I sit and play with them, even though they're like so good. They're like they're like coach, come play with us. Yeah. And I'm like oh my god, no! So you can overshadow me. It's, <laughs> it's a young man's game, isn't esports like a young man's game, right? I feel I definitely feel that it is. Can't they? Do, don't you think younger people they're faster with the fast twitch muscles with like their hands and stuff and yeah, reflexes? I, I think mean, so. I remember. Or something. is that just us being old? No, I I think so. I remember uh, reading. I remember reading, I think, on Snapchat or somewhere. It's like, hey, at 26, it's time to retire from gaming. I'm like, what? Wow. Like, that's crazy. But <laughs> hand-eye coordination apparently goes down after your late 20s. So I'm like, okay. Huh. But I believe it's all about the love, though. Right. You know, if you're good, you're good. If you can get better, you can get better. Right. If you're able to analyze and pay attention, yeah. you know, have fun with it continue to improve because right. you know science is what science is it's just uh st- statistically based yeah you know you you don't have to be a statistic you can be a person and yeah. keep playing until you're 99 as long as you're good exactly at that point yeah okay so when i play i'm just gonna relate everything to my soccer in college kind of actually stuff. in our speaking of soccer mm-hmm. our men's team won I believe they they won nationals like their really? best like in awesome. NIA. They won last night. Shout out to you last night. Yes, we were we were up at midnight watching the game. Oh, on, cool! Online, it was just like penalty kicks, and it was oh, it was that's intense. The worst. It was intense, but they won. And nice. We were like so surprised. They awesome. Good. Shout out to CMU Central Methodist the national champs. The we Eagles. Were, we were just like good job, Eagles. We were just so we were so happy. It cool. Like, Congratulations. Most of, most of them live in my building back at work. So I'm oh, like, cool. yes, my building. Awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely exciting for any school, no matter what division or whatever it is, when they win a right. big championship. That's just a, a fun atmosphere to be around. It, it's it special. definitely is. We, it's just it's very, very good. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, yeah. Uh, so I was going to relate kind of – I'm just relating everything off my college soccer experience. Um, we had, you know, weightlifting day to stay in shape mm. i'm not saying you guys have anything like that but do you we have do. something kind of do you we do. okay and they hate it they hate it right <laughs> as any gamer would they hate it some of them hate it yeah uh, some of them are really passionate about it too because they want to do esports and they want to get in better shape they want to be you know they want to be themselves or right. more of what they desire to be as an esports player yeah so i mean they have Two times a week. Actually, I was just talking to our weightlifting co- coach. Oh, cool. He all, he also plays League of Legends. He used to play League. Oh, nice. That was one of the things he did. It went, mm-hmm. you know, he was like, hey. So he was excited right. to with the opportunity oh, to be cool. able to help them get there and get in shape. And a lot of what they do is hand-eye coordination. So okay. you know, a lot of their workouts are designed. They don't do any Olympic lifts. You know, anything. They don't need to do anything right, like exactly. that. Right, exactly. Right. We don't. Last thing we need is anybody breaking a finger, breaking an arm, breaking anything. <laughs> yeah, or just being or, or tweaking something or break it. Yeah, anything. Right. No, need, no need for injuries. We don't need them that strong enough to break the keyboard. And just like, <laughs> you know, in rage the quit and exactly. really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So, so what, what's like a hand-eye coordination type exercise or something to, that uh, what, makes them better? Uh, I think the last time he, I think he has them doing a small amount of weights. The last time I was in there. I mean, that should them. be good. Just kind of keep some fat off. I mean, if yeah. you're sedentary. Yeah. A sanitary lifestyle is not that great. So to mix in some kind of even cardio or something would be beneficial for them. Right. I mean, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy oh, yeah, mind, healthy video game player. Yeah, they do scratches and they do some of that as well. Because I remember the last time I went in there, because sometimes I'll go in there, show support. Right. Because, you know, <laughs> coaches are sedimentary too. Right. <laughs> so I go in there and show support. They were like, okay. Is that coach, you coming in there to work out? <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. be in there <laughs> for a little bit. Right. But, uh, I mean, they do what they're supposed to do for the most part. You know, it's just different. It's a transition, you know. Right. Some of them haven't really worked out before or worked out often. Sure. So, it's you know, it's just different. Yeah. That's good for them. 
And then, so I had on the uh, this physical therapist guy on. Did you talk to him yesterday? That uh, I think we we talked to him for a little bit. Okay, he was you know he's all about preventing injuries with esports. Like you know a lot of injuries he said are in the wrists and the hands, and so you know one thing he was advocating is like every two hours you need to kind of stretch and like do those kinds of stretches and just kind of stretch out your your wrists. Do you guys do anything like that? Like every couple hours. Kind of tell your people or just so hey, actually, get up and walk around, go check out the sun for a little bit or do anything like. Yeah. So actually, our practice is usually they cap out right around two, two and a half hours. Oh, so that's it? yeah. Most of the times like so I'm just getting started when I'm playing Fortnite at two and a half. hours. So it's like three to five thirty sometimes. Yeah. And like the, the, the beauty of me working there on campus is like, hey, if you guys need more time, let me know, because usually, three, you know, three to five thirty, that's Rock League and Overwatch. And when league is able to come in, you know, 7 to 10, it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, come on in. But I keep the evenings option on because, you know, most days, you know, every day is pretty long and every day is pretty busy. But I know sometimes they need more practice. Right. One of the things my analyst told me for Overwatch is just like they just need to play more. And, yeah. you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm like, really? I'm like, okay, all right. You know, because yeah. I, I get it and I'm like, I get what you're saying. You're yeah. just saying they need more experience with the title. They need right. To be able to enjoy it and know it more and do all these things that yeah. you have to do. Like any game. Yeah, the more you know it. Or like anything. You know, the rule of 10,000 hours. Right. Probably not. It's not that hard to get 10,000 hours in video games. That's for sure, right? It's definitely <laughs> not. Are these kids, uh, <clears throat> so if they're only practicing at the facility for two and a half hours, are they going home? Do you tell them, hey, you guys, uh, it'd be cool if you guys went and played with each other? You know, they kind of s- suggest it. Not tell them, but, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you guys did some more practice on your own outside of here? Yeah, I mean, some students are able to. Yeah. Uh, it's But the PC arena of what eSports is, oh, is yeah, like you guys are everybody PC. has to have one. Yeah. So some of them, if they don't have the PC, some of them are working on getting them. They're expensive. Yeah. I mean, the P, the type of PC that you yeah. need is pretty expensive. Really expensive. Really. Yeah, and especially if you're a college student. Especially if you're a college student. Yeah. Because then you're asking, trying to ask mom and dad, hey. Oh, and that's another good yeah. way for them to pl- keep playing right. is playing on your guys' team. Right. It's got to be super easy to recruit. It, I, I'd say with our, in this particular area, it is and it isn't because, like, you're recruiting. You want to recruit the right people. You want to recruit you're a the coach, right people. You want to get the right people, right attitude, right GPAs, oh. <laughs> right, you know. So there's yeah. a lot of rights. And also, you know, you want them to be a good fit for the institution. Sure. You know, and – like recruiting for the first year was is was pretty rough. It was just like okay. How many years have you guys been doing it? This is this is our we're in the middle of our first year. Uh huh. We're moving on our second year next okay, year. Okay, nice. And it's been it's been a roller coaster because you know sometimes you're up yeah. and down because you're trying to bring you like hey this is the opportunity we have, um and then you're trying to say hey this is the team we're building from scratch. Okay. Be a part of this. Be you know be built yeah. around. Right. And that's the tough part because then. Creating a team from scratch and everybody wants to win, but win because that's what you know. Being a good team, you means. play to win. You play to win, and you know, getting the losing team is no fun. Yeah, yeah, but getting the team in the mindset that losing is not losing. Getting you know, which is the most difficult mindset to right. get anybody in, especially for an 18, 19 year old. Oh yeah, <laughs> getting them to understand, you know, because we had kids that came over there yesterday. You play, you play to improve. Don't play to win. Play to improve right. first. You know, if you lose, you, you're going to lose sometimes. You need, I, need to learn. I hope you lose so you can get better. That's how you learn. Right. And, you know, so that's that's one of the big, big things is, you know, you know, you get upset. You yeah. Get all of these things, but you need to get better because, you know, for my years of playing Tekken and Street Fighter, I mean, younger years, like, yeah, the frustration is a real thing. You're like, oh, I'm done. Turn this off. <laughs> you go do something else. Not even necessarily rage quit. But. You get older and you play, you kind of know, oh, well, well, I'm off of it right now. I'm yeah. just not yeah. playing as well as I was playing earlier. Right. And that's <clears throat> why you stop. You don't stop because you lose. You stop because your endurance isn't there, which is which is totally fine. Happens with everything. Yeah, and that, that definitely happens yeah. with everything. But to get them to understand that that's, that is better than saying, oh, my gosh, you know, I keep losing, so I'm done. Right. You know, play until you reach a point to where you don't feel it's helping you anymore. Then stop, take a break, figure out what it is you need to do next. Because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, 
that's the only thing about fighting games that I'd say I can transition and teach them, you know, because that's the biggest part. I'd play a game, and you have to adjust a whole lot quicker. That's the only problem. The only difference yeah. between shooters and fighting games. I have to adjust. I have 60 seconds. If I win or lose in that 60 seconds, you know, I could lose in 15 seconds. Right. And so now I have the next round to adjust, to try to adjust in, a, you know, two out of three. So it's yeah. Like, and that sucks. I don't have it. That's not a lot of time. Right. It's like, okay, now you figure out what you're doing wrong. Figure out how to do something different. Okay. Is it the spacing? Is it the frames? How are they <laughs> catching you? How are you off guard? You know, what do you need to do? Are you not blocking low enough? Where are they? Wow. You know, it's a lot of things that go into it. So, I mean, that helps keep me balanced and leveled and saying, okay, I'm just not, I wasn't good enough. So there's something I need to be doing I'm, that makes you want to play more. Right. And it's to get to the point to where you're analyzing yourself and you want to play more so you can say, this is what I need to do next. This is, I rushed out, you know, playing Overwatch, you'll rush out or you'll run out to the wrong area. Yeah. Just like, Man, I should have stayed back. <laughs> Man, I should have stayed with the team and teaching that team work that's huge is the biggest thing games, right right and the biggest lesson i tell them every time like these guys are not your friends and you might be like oh that's negative it's, no it's not i mean they're not they're your team right so the thing is the difference between friends and team is like when you're playing with your friends you're not necessarily playing you're to win you're playing with them because they know you yeah if i'm playing a shooter with my friends we're going to play a whole lot differently than if i'm playing with a group of people i don't know yeah you know, if I'm running gun with my friends, because they know how I play, they're going to adjust their play exactly, style right. to how I'm playing, mm -hmm. which is okay. Because, you know, they're my friends. Right. And that's what we do. That's what friends do. Fun, yeah. They adjust. They, yeah. And that's fine. But when you're on a team, that's not necessarily what the team does. You right. know, in Overwatch, they have roles, you know, support. Yeah. Uh, DPS. It's hit a team-based game. You got to play like it's, a team. You, you have can't to rainbow like, it up. Exactly. You got to play like a team. You yeah. have to communicate. You have to listen. You this have ain't Call to, of Duty, son. Exactly. You have yeah. to understand that nobody's criticizing <laughs> you to criticize you. Friends criticize you to make fun of you. Somebody's criticizing you on the team. That means you're doing something wrong right. that you need to do right. Right. And it's just a different scenario. Getting them to understand that is you know it's proven to be a task but as it sure. goes on they're starting to get the handle of it and get an idea of it and understanding what it means to play on a team right to communicate to let people know what's going on there's six of them that's like a hockey team yeah yeah are they do they all get along pretty well is there was an adjustment period where they all so with Ro so with rocket league and all of them they i mean they all really get along they sit and eat together nice like you go in, I'd go into the cafe at school and you see them sitting together. Sometimes I sit with them, sometimes I won't. Right. But they're always sitting together, spending time, and it's like there's no animosity. Everybody's friends with each other. It's, yeah. It's really good. You know, all the esport guys, they just like they hang out. Yeah, and they're the ones that are starting this whole thing. They're kind of the pioneers. Yeah. At, at your school, especially. They definitely are. That's going to be kind of cool for them, kind of figuring their way out and like being, hey, we're the new thing. I mean, like, wow, what a really cool – gosh, I wish we would have had this growing up. They got their own practice facility, too. So, you know, unlike any other sports, they don't have to share it. You know, basketball yeah. court, anybody right. can use the basketball. Yeah. Nobody can use the eSports room. Really? Just the eSports team. That's awesome. Huh. What are uh, what are some of the big schools, like Division One schools, that have eSports? Do you know? Are there uh, I know, I many think, of them? Or? I don't know too many of them. I know <coughs> UTI has one. Yeah. And they have, like, this monstrously awesome facility right. with 60 PCs. So it's just like, wow. A lot the bigger facilities are the D ones they have, you know, I think they have more to throw at it. Oh, of course. So, you know, they there's got that a football different, money coming in, that right. football cash. And they can bring some. I think they're going to bring some of their current students in to help facilitate their programs. I'm okay. not sure. But, you know, they have a bit more of a different avenue. So, yeah. I mean, but it'll be a lot of fun. It's more so, you know, esports is just so fun and new. It is. It's yeah. just getting able to play with those guys. You know, being able right. to compete with Mizzou. Esports will compete with Mizzou on that level. Basketball, no. But, right. But esports will be able to compete against Mizzou. Yeah. There's not that physical limitation. Right. Yeah. Um, so when you're recruiting, are you like, are you trying to look for the best players? Like, I need, I got. So like, saying like, two years. You're in your team or two or three years, 
your Overwatch team is about to be out of here, about to graduate and get out. Are you going to start looking at really good players to take their place? Like, are you looking as a coach? You got to look for the future and to build your team. And how does that recruiting look like? Where are you looking for like good players to come in? Like, how do you look for a good player? And so, as far as how we're when we're looking for good players, we're checking. There's like sites like Be Recruited. There's a lot of esports sites. Okay. Where you can look up different people and different types of students, girls, guys, anybody who's interested in certain titles like Overwatch. Whenever we expand, if we add some more, uh-huh. those titles will be up there. So we're just looking everywhere. We've got students currently from Michigan, Texas. You know, some some are from the Midwest, some are yeah. from, you know, areas around here. So a big that is a important aspect of it. You just go as like the highest person on the list and just work your way down. Hey, um, want to come play for us? <laughs> we got a sick facility, uh, good food, nice campus, pretty girls, <laughs> good morals. Come on down. <laughs> so it's like. And uh, skill, we just we try to make sure we look for highly skilled, but we try to make sure there's a balance because, you know, scholarships are affected by that, you know, making yeah. sure we're able to get them the best benefit right. to come here. Okay. And that's what's important. You know, you got to be happy wherever you're going. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're going to spend four years here. And also that's part of why we have like A, B, and the C team. So we're planning and our strategy is pretty gotcha. much based around the A team will be is the main team. So for Overwatch and League, you know, A team, main team, teaches the B team. Yeah. B team teaches the C team to basically make sure and to reestablish all the roles. Okay. So, you know, everybody feels like they get to improve because, you know, it's important to to communicate with those different levels of teams. So you don't feel like, well, I'm not on the A team, so it doesn't mean anything. Like, no, it doesn't. And that's part of the beauty of it, too. The B, C team, they'll be playing Mizzou just as well as the A team will. Yeah. They'll have those opportunities to play the same D1s that yeah. the main team plays. And if you're not on the A team, that's your fault. Yeah. Get on the A team. Right, exactly. And, you know. we're not. If you're good enough to be on the A team, practice harder. Exactly. I'm talking to you, B team at CMU. <laughs> I know you're listening. <laughs> if you're on the C or B team, you're not good enough to be on the A team. <laughs> Practice more. Do your stretches. Get into uh, some nootropics. Get your brain right. And get on that A team. Just practice. Uh, he, your coach isn't saying that. I'm saying that. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're, just, uh, we're just super excited about that, though. That's cool, man. That aspect of it. So then they can train each other. So they, they gain another ability. And it's right. all about gaining these different avenues to become successful. Right. That's what. No, it's cool that you got them those little groups teaching each other. I mean, you have to. You can't be better without learning from better people. So right. That's a nice little, yeah, uh, strategy you got there. And I think, I mean, I think it'll help them bond and be closer because being on the B team is not bad. It's just, no, it just really not. says like, hey, you might need a bit more flexibility to find out where you are. Yeah. It's just like being a freshman in college. It's not a horrible place. You're at the beginning. You're supposed to be freshman and sophomore yeah. year figuring out what your major is gonna oh, be. Oh yeah, you're you still know? just a lost kid. You're still lost. You're still trying. I, am. To, I was. Yeah. You're still trying to figure everything out. So you know, you gotta adapt to where you're at and improve from there. I'm 39. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> trying to figure out why i just watched spider-man throw an entire pizza <laughs> you've seen these cosplay are you mess around with this cosplay stuff have you ever seen that before all these people dressed up yes i have there's they have some anime conventions some of them are in chicago okay and i i went there and i dressed up at a certain point in time probably like a year two years ago oh you dressed up? i was the anbu from naruto i did that with a couple of friends i don't know what that means i like i wasn't i'm not too big of a fan of Naruto, so I what's didn't know. What's Naruto? It's it's a it's an anime. Okay. And it's a manga. It's a okay. Somewhat similar to DBZ or Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Okay. So you know you pretty much have this hero. He has a best friend. His best friend becomes his worst enemy. Okay. And you know that's just kind of how Naruto went. What made you uh, decide to dress up for that? Uh, I mean, they were like, "Don, you should go. We're gonna go. We're all gonna go dressed up." I was like. Why not? Okay, why Let's not? Let's do it. Let's do something fun. Okay. It was, it was a very fun and engaging experience, you know, to be a part of that. Yeah, they look like they're having a blast. It's it's a lot of fun. You know, you figure out a character, people take pictures of you, you feel real important. Yeah. <laughs> and then you take it all off and then you're like, you're normal. Nice. It's like, it's like being a superhero for a little while. It's a it's very enjoyable. That's cool. That's a good way to look at it. Huh. Yeah, I've just, it kind of cracked me up the first day I was in here. 
and I walked in and I just saw, you know, it's it when you don't see it before for me, I was just taken a little aback by just the seeing adults dressed up. Exactly. When there's other people that aren't dressed up, I was like, I I would be too embarrassed to do that. Right. I mean, I it's uh it comes to being like in a comfort zone or being comfortable. Right. Yeah. And it's a it's a tough thing. I'd say if Kansas City is your local area, you wouldn't want to do it. But you know, if you're going if you're going out of town, to Chicago or something. If you're yeah. going out of town, you're like you're more than welcome. You're more than comfortable because yeah, because nobody's gonna like look at you and stare you down like oh my gosh <laughs> is that such and such dressed up as goku you know right you don't want those questions so you don't you <laughs> don't want to you don't want to answer those questions you know and then you that's got funny that's a great idea and go then, somewhere else and do it yeah that's that's just how it is i mean i took the pictures but you know when they see them on facebook afterwards the, that's different the shock effect doesn't really the shock yeah. value is gone right so <laughs> you know if they saw me yeah. in it it's a bit it's a bit like oh my god I, I would probably post them around halloween just yeah. to kind of, I'm not lying about it. It just throws you peop- throws people off mm-hmm. when it's around Halloween. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely would. What was the uh, gaming like? The competitive, were you pretty competitive at the uh, street fighting type? The, the, uh, when we, yeah, when we did it. Fighter uh, games? Back when we did it, and I used to commentate back there too, back in uh, St. Louis. That's my hometown. You commentated on uh, the on game, fighting on games? On the fighting games. I was Dirty Don. I have Dirty friend, Don? Yeah. I nice. have I have a friend of mine named Tasty Steve. He works for E League now. That's what he does. And we he used to he used to commentate there. So it was like it was awesome once we saw him go and move to California and that's what he does and he does E League. Oh, cool. Like, we're like, that's awesome. He was uh commentating the Tekken World Series tournament or the Tekken World tournament this week. Pretty big. So I was just like, that's awesome. Oh, cool. But uh we you know, it was fun. Commentating was fun, competing on a competitive level was fun. What's that like? Is there like a lot of trash talking? Is it like battle raps? Are people in your face just trash talking and doing whatever? No. That's what I imagine. <laughs> when I think about fighting games like that, that's, that's in my mind. That's what I'm thinking. No, it's people, two people sitting quietly in front of the TV. That's literally what it is. Cause oh, I'm thinking next uh, on the, on oh, the yeah, consoles when you're right next to each other. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're yeah. still sitting there quietly because you're trying to focus. Really? It's a it's one of those things where it's just really focus intensive, you know. Okay. Because we used to do it was some they called it bar wars. So we'd go to a, there was a bar where they would handle these like these tournaments and these okay. competitions and they would stream it. I like it. And it was it was rough. You'd have it just you like go in there and play. It'd be setups. Uh-huh. So if you wanted to psych yourself down and you play on in the room, like, or if you played a game that you weren't about to literally compete in, yeah. you could go do that. Okay. Like, hey, they got a setup, and you go lose, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't need to play today. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it's intense. You're sitting there, you're playing your opponent, and a lot of it is just making sure you're ready to adjust to the to the next move because playing in person is so different from playing online. Right. You know, so you're adjusting to that. Yeah, I mean, and they have the certain they have certain abilities that they didn't have when you were online. So it's okay. just like it's monitoring the timing, knowing the blocking. Things change. Wow! And it's being ready because you know fighting games they have so many patches too. Yeah, They're patching those like okay, this character's broke, gotta fix it. Yeah. So I mean, competitively, it was it was rough. It was uh, yeah. How come there wasn't much trash talking at least before and after? You don't when you beat someone, don't you just. Most times, you know, if you get trash talk, you walk away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you lose and you get trash talk, you're just like, I got to get out of here. Right. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the scene was definitely, it was very competitive scene because everybody was serious. It was a very loving, embracing, but serious community. Yeah. It's like being at mom's house, but mom knew how to play video games really, really good. <laughs> Did you guys play each other for money? Like, how does... Oh, yeah. we There were some money matches. Some of those I participated in, some of those I didn't. For the most part, I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't working as much. So <laughs> yeah. I wasn't participating in money matches, but they always, they would always have money matches. Like, what did we talk, what were some of the big matches you can remember some money-wise? Some of them were like 100, some of them were, I believe, like two, 300 or 500. And then some people would just get challenged. Like, they'd be playing, they'd be there. Yeah. It was this guy named Rex in the community, and he would, he would just like, people would challenge him, and then he would beat him. He was that good. Everybody was, wanted a piece. He was just that good. And he he did it for money. I'll only play you for twenty bucks or something. Or <laughs> yeah, he would he would play. That's what like, I'd be like. If you want to challenge me, you gotta put some money on the line. Yeah, he would play the money matches a lot. He that's, would play those a whole. That's kind of cool. 
reminds me of like kind of the, the world of like pool. You ever see like it in the pool halls and some of those dudes? Yeah. Man, they they those. go deep too. They go deep. They'll throw just a thousand dollars or more and they're like the C D characters. Right. So you know they're pretty much they're sure they're gonna win. They're sure they're gonna win and if you beat them, you might wanna get out of there fairly quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you might not even want to collect. You might just want to say, you know what? You yeah, give me that yeah, later. Yeah. Keep it. Good um, on you. Yep. This was uh, really nice, man. I appreciate you coming oh, on the podcast. I, I appreciate man. you having it's me. It's funny on. that you know I was, I've had this booth and just staring at you guys the entire time because we're right across from each other. Yeah. I'm really fascinated about this whole coaching thing. That's really cool. How lucky are you to get that gig? Extremely lucky. It's a. Uh, it's definitely like a blessed position. I'd say that because I go to Central Methodist, but I think yeah, no, it's is, definitely yeah. a blessing no because it's, it's just a new, it's new territory. So, you know, putting somebody in here who's going to take the time to analyze it and at least make it easier for the next person to get in there and yeah. be able to get it done. I think that's yeah. what's important. Finding somebody who's like, hey, this is what happens. <laughs> you know, um, without the first person, there's no second person. Right. So there's nobody to follow up. So, right. you know, and the big thing about this being the first year is making sure that, you know, things are running a certain way so that they can be improved next time yeah. for the next coach. And so that he'll be like, okay, this is the standard. Right. And, you know, that's the thing about being the first one. You set yeah. the standard. <laughs> it's got a lot of pressure on your shoulders. Yeah. But a good pressure. I mean, some people will get stronger under pressure. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, I had another question. Where did it go? Where'd my question go? Ah, uh, I don't know. Crap. It was a good one. I promise. Okay. Greatest question ever. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. It happens. It does happen. What can I say? I'm a bad podcaster. <laughs> That's uh, not true. I'm all right. I'm doing my best. Um, well, yeah, again, thank you for doing this. This was fun. Uh, where can people find you at? Like, where's a good place to find you guys and get information on your school and the esports, all that stuff? So, a good place is uh, centralmethodist.edu. That's www.centralmethodist.edu. Okay. That's the, the website's a good place. And you can also just look up CMU Eagle Esports. CMU Eagle Esports. Yes. Do you got a team here? Our Today? Team, no, our team did not. Actually, we have a like a possible recruit, like actually a possible student playing with the coach behind us. That's why he's just over there having a good time. Oh, but, right on. Yeah, they're playing <laughs> Rocket League. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks fun. <laughs> it is. It, it's a yeah. lot of fun. Rocket League is just one of those games. So I like I like Overwatch more. <laughs> I, yeah, I've, I haven't played Overwatch. I, I would probably like Overwatch. I played Rocket League for a little bit. That was a game I played for like on the free weekend on Xbox. And I got enough enjoyment out of the weekend yeah i was like yeah. it's a good game i don't know that i could play a ton of more of it but i liked it right. it was fine right. yeah. but you know well we'll say one thing about coaching you know how all the coaches don't play the sport they coach in that is my yeah it, it, it gets there at certain right you're like hey i want to i'm like oh i'm i got a coach yeah <laughs> so i mean that's the only thing that really i think you have but making that time does you know it does impact the students and they, they oh absolutely that. do you teach or anything up there or is, is that all you do is coach up there so i coach and i'm also like res life so i work one of the halls i work and run okay. one of the halls right on sounds like a fun time it it, it is yeah it definitely is i like your life it sounds <laughs> pretty good to me <laughs> all right yeah one more thing before you get out of here last night you mentioned something about a podcast you're uh who does a podcast? You know someone else that's starting a podcast? Oh, uh, yeah, the uh, Social Soundtrack podcast. You know, they talk about, like, healing. It's pretty much a black perspective on holidays and wellness. And then, and then just the overall perspective on wellness as yeah, well. Yeah, what was the name of that? Let's, let's yeah. Uh, the Social Soundtrack podcast. Social Soundtrack podcast. And who does that? Uh, I believe Lysandra Campbell's. Yeah. And Lysandra Campbell and her friend uh, Kara, they do that. Right. Podcast nice. together and they just discuss like different issues. Their most recent episode was like holiday healing. And I, it was interesting. It was a small rap in the beginning. Heck yeah. It was, it was okay. Yeah. But it was a it was a very good podcast. Nice. Yeah. So we're pimping that. And we are uh, throwing out there Central Methodist edu. Yes. Boom. You guys, kids, everybody, check it out. 
Uh, good luck to you in your season, and good Thank luck you. on your head coaching, dude. This was a pleasure. It was a it was it was an awesome time. Yeah, I appreciate. We'll do it. this again. Let's do it. Yeah, you got my card, and uh, next time you can uh, come to my studio, and we'll we'll do something uh, a little bit different next time. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. All right. All right, later, man. All right, thank you. Listen to Neanderthal. Say what?